Hello there, everyone. Welcome to my humble abode. Today we're going to be reading a few creepy pastas taken from the SCP Foundation website's own libraries. Now, if you are one of those who are easily scared, I don't blame you if you turn back now. But if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe if you enjoy. And strap yourselves in. Okay. Roll the intro. Cow Julius Productions. Sit down, get comfy, and away your aura. I am followed by fire. It sounds really, really weird, I know, but it's true. Every house and every apartment I've ever lived in has burned to the ground. Even stranger is... It's predictable. If I lived somewhere for six years, six years after I move out, it goes up in flames. It's not exact, but it's close. Usually accurate to within two or three months. It's true, I, I'm not sure when I noticed the pattern for the first time, but it's always been there. When I was just a kid, right after I was born, my family lived in an old house behind my grandmother's house. We were there until I was two when we moved. I remember visiting my grandmother's at four, watching the smoldering embers of our little house and the curling smoke rising into the air. Old wiring from the fifties finally gave out. From the shack, we moved to a farm. We weren't well off enough to own it or anything, but we did run it for the local doctor. The farmhouse wasn't that big, and most of my childhood memories came from the cozy family setting it's engendered here. I remember Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays. I think of it whenever I... Think of back home. We lived there from when I was two until I was nine. When the doctor we worked for died. At 15, it burned. An old tree struck by lightning, sparking the blaze. The third house I lived in was second to burn to the ground. We only lived there for around two years, so... It happened when I was 13. It was an old house. A very old house. What I remember most was its shape. We called them shotgun houses because... You could fire a shotgun from one end and it would pass all the way through to the other. One room after another, all in a straight line, built as needed. It was honestly very old and very dry. I'm not surprised that the heating stove in the front room sprung a leak on the other tenants after us. Other than where I'm at now, the only place left is my parents' current house. When they asked me why I was moving all my stuff stored in the basement out, I didn't have the heart to tell them, so I made up some excuse about having my old books and stuff closer to college. 
I didn't know what else to say. When I turned 19, I moved out of my parents' house and went to college. Before renting the house I live in now, I stayed in an apartment in the city. I shared it with a couple of a-holes that seemed nice enough before I moved in. Everyone knows the type. Won't pay their bills on time. Eats whatever they can get their hands on. It got worse and worse until I made up my mind. When I'd finally had enough, I left. We were four months into a one-year lease. Now I'm just keeping an eye on the news. Waiting for the sparks. A gas leak. A stray match. Sooner or later they will burn. They all burn. I can't feel your hair. The river streaming down. Out of your head and into my open lap. It once was such silk. Always soft to feel. But now so sparse and wired. How frayed such disarray. I can't feel your face, the mask so perfect. Upon your head and kept so flawless. It once was porcelain, almost mystical. But now so torn and broken. How cracked and so out of place. I can't feel your hand, a thing so fragile, that it might break if so looked at wrong. It once was dainty, oh so delicate, but now so bent and shattered, how singed so pulverized. I can't feel your touch, something I've loved ever since we had once met long ago. It once was simulation, exhilarating, but now so gone and so far away. How far could it possibly be? I can't feel your pulse. The thing I miss most, I can't feel, I can't. Kevin was patrolling the fifth floor hallway when he heard the noise. It wasn't unusual to hear yelling. A lot of the apartments were section eights and a lot of the rest were college students. So he would hear all sorts of stuff happening late at night. But this was coming from the south stairway and it didn't sound like an argument or a party. Just loud grunts and clattering and a deep voice saying the F-bomb a lot. He frowned at his watch. More than five hours left. He was still new. If this was serious, it would have been his first time. Most of the security thought their uniforms made them look awesome, but he always felt ridiculous in his, and they wouldn't even let him have pepper spray. Whatever he thought, and pushed the door open. Somehow, the first thing he saw was the guy. He was tall, with sweatpants and an old t-shirt hanging off his frame. He looked exhausted and sweaty. He was wielding a huge stick. No, a spear. And then after noticing that the guy was actually pointing the spear at something, only then did he see the tentacles. They were as thick as a man's torso, a cluster of them filling the entire stairwell and suggesting more beneath. 
unmistakably those of an octopus, but far larger and, he would later realize, far too numerous. They wriggled along the walls, floor, and in the air, pr like probing fingertips. Whenever one got f too far up onto the landing, the guy would slash at them, driving them back. Whenever he came near the stairs, they tried lazily to snare him, forcing him to dance away. It looked like they had been at it for hours. What are you doing? Kevin finally managed. Holding it back, the guy spat between spear thrusts. A moment passed. What is it? Kevin tried again. It's an octopus, man. I don't know what it wants, but shiz. What, I was, what was I supposed to do? Go back to bed after I saw it? How long has this been going on? Kevin took a step back toward the hallway door. Every night for, I don't know, like five years now? It goes away at dawn. Five years? Years? Five years, I, I haven't. He jabbed downward, yanking his foot out of reach. I haven't really made much progress. He stepped back, tapping the wall with the spear, taking a break as the tentacles followed the sound. I don't know what it wants, he whispered, conspiratorially, but we obviously can't let it happen. Kevin swallowed. Why us? Why doesn't anyone else know about this? The guy frowned. I think mostly they just used the elevator. Kevin eyed the wandering tentacles. They tried to grab at the guy whenever he got too close, but other than that, seemed content to poke around. Where do they go? he asked. You know, once or twice I tried to go around to the other side and come up from underneath the guy said i went up the stairs to where its head should be and you know what i found huh? more tentacles my friend more frickin tentacles the guy stopped abruptly into the creature's teeth swinging his spear it recoiled and sent two arms tumbling in his direction he grit his teeth Raised the spear and grinned. Kevin backed slowly out the door. He looked down at his radio. For a moment he stood, considering. But in the end, he left it in his belt. He resumed his patrol. He still had five hours left. He made a mental note. Next time he ended up on the third shift, he would stick to the northern stairs. Thank you all for watching these little horror stories. Link to the original stories will be in the description below. Now, I wish you all sweet dreams. Good night, sleep tight. And don't let the vampires bite. Roll the outro. Thank you for watching my mind-numbing content. If you want your brain cells back, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll consider returning them to you. I'll see you all in the next video.